Okay, so before we move on to our like sort of final language topic, which is concurrency, which is sort of a big deal, um, we need to create a program which we can use as an example for later. And that program is, is this problem about finding the MD5 checksum of a file. Uh, I think we know enough to do this, but I want to walk through uh, something very similar so that we can do it pretty quickly. So a checksum is taking some big, huge chunk of data and turning it into a small number. And we use that because a number is a lot easier to work with than this huge block of data. And we can use it, for example, if I take the checksum of the same block of data, I get the same number in the end. And so then I can know the file hasn't changed, for example. Because if it changes, then the checksum changes. That's the idea of what a checksum is for. Okay? And so um, we are going to do one that's not MD5, and then you can use MD5 as your example. So what I'm going to use is one called FNV. Okay, FNV is named after people who made it, and it's in hash slash FNV. So the general idea here is those things are called a hash. They take big things and make them into a small number, and they do so so that the same big thing ends up with the same number. Okay? This is called non-cryptographic hash. So the thing about a cryptographic hash is it means it's hard to go the other direction. I can't take that number and know what file to use to. It's hard for me to like, oh, I have this number, and figure out how to make a file that produces that number. That's an important property for certain problems. This one's non-cryptographic. What that means is uh, it doesn't have that property. If I get a hash, I can figure out how to make it easily. Okay? We don't need to worry about that so much. The point is, this one is very similar. It is also a hash, and MD5 is a hash, so you can use it in the same way. They give you a different number. So so we're going to use this, and what we want to do is create a program which takes in a file and gives us that hash. It computes the FNB hash of that file. Okay? Remember, we did the MB5 hash of, for the Gravatar example. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to write that program real quick. I'm going to call it uh, FNB sum. Okay. Where did that go? There it is. New file. Package main. And it's going to start very similar to this one. We're going to open a file. Except this one will come from the user. You guys remember how to do that? Rose.args1. And now I'm going to create a hash. So the way this works is you say fnb.new64 or new64a. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to say that new 64. That returns a hash 64. So let's imagine a little. Um, so if we go look at <coughs> hash 64, we can see what that is. <coughs> hash 64 is an interface, okay? And it has one method, uint64, and then it has hash. So I did not describe this when I talked about interfaces. But when you embed, remember how embedding we get embed types? I had Android embedded person, and that meant I can call any methods that are on person on Android. This is very similar with an interface. I embedded another interface inside of it. And basically what that means is hash 64 is the sum 64 method plus everything that hash contains. So if we go look at hash, so it also includes all of these, right? It includes block size, size, reset, sum. And notice it also includes writer. Writer is another interface, one we've been using. <clears throat> so what this means is that hash has a write method because hash is a writer, right? And hash 64 is a hash. So hash 64 is a hash, which is a writer, okay? So hash 64 is also a writer, okay? What that gives us the ability to do is I can use it in copy. So I'm going to call it h colon equal f new 64. I'm going to say I wrote copy. Put H as the writer, and the reader is the file. Okay, and then I'm going to return, or not return here, but I'm going to print it out. H dot sum. You give it nil. Okay. So what this does is that hash function. It takes a bunch of data and it reads it, and then it gives you a number at the end, and that's what sum is doing. You <coughs> that number. Okay. The nil here is because you can give it some data. We just put nil. The other thing we could do, instead of sum, is we could say 
64. And that will give us a number as an integer. We do sum, it gives it as a slice of bytes. Because these various hash functions can give different sizes of that number. Like some are, um, this one is a 64 bit, but MD5 is maybe 120 or something. Right? It's, some, it's a different number of bits. And so that's, the sum is more general. This one's very specific because it's a 64 bit. Okay. So if we print that, we should get the FNV hash of a file. So uh, clear that and then go install. And then I'm going to compute it of the, of the same. So that's the hash. Okay, so let me make a change to the file. Can you scratch that before you send it over? Let's get version one. Thank you. Um, all I'm going to do is say the sum is. So now I'm going to print out the sum is. And the reason I'm doing that is so I'm changing this file. By changing this file, when I rerun this program, so I run go install and then I run this program again. I get a different number. Okay? So anytime one byte of that file changes, you get a different number. That's the point of the hash. Okay? So the hash can be like a stand-in for the version of the file or something like that. It's a very useful thing to have. Um, because like I said, it takes a very huge amount of data and makes it a very small thing. And I can compare numbers easily. But comparing two files is hard. I have to actually like read both. Um, so it's a useful thing to have. Uh, and like I said, it's also a useful thing for verifying that your file hasn't changed, right? Because I can get a file and that number, and then at the end, I can go check it. Say it's a really good file I'm downloading. I can check it against this number. I can run the same FMD sum on that same file. If the numbers match, that means it didn't change. And so I can be, I can be uh, assured that I got the right file. And you, you actually do see that with large files. People often attach to them that MD5 number. We're doing an FNV number, but the problem example we're going to do is with an MD5. But the same basic idea, okay? Everybody following what we're trying to do here? Yeah. Okay. So our problem is to take this basic template and make one that uses MD5 instead of FNV, okay? Right? Because it says create a program which finds the MD5 checksum of a file. So I want to be able to say my MD5 file name and get this kind of number. Okay? Everybody follow? Yeah. Cool. Dude, on the code that you had up there, what was it that you changed? I was copying when you changed something. It was a slight change. I just added some extra text. Oh, you just added text. 